there's everything else. Then we've got this wonderful accounting thing that's just volleyed into our court. Quarter, quarter four was a lot more interesting for us. So we got through the chaos in Q3. We, we, got pretty, we got pretty comfortable with our plastic toil process. We're still running pretty small at that time but we consolidated all our information from testing. So basically, balance started, we documented the heck out of what we were doing and figured out what works, what doesn't, how we were doing it. We still didn't know everything about it because we just didn't have enough equipment to analyze it. We knew what we were approximately getting. We'd send off our tests to Intertech. Intertech would come back and say, yeah, fuel's great. We do the ASTM specs, but we still didn't know all of the variables and how to really control it. And so what really came into it was we had to integrate the companies and get expertise everywhere to help us build this company up. We also went out to our shareholder base and said, help me, I need welders, we need metal workers, we need everything. So while we're dealing with all these things of basically building what's going to be a huge company, we also had to try and scale up. So we brought in and really uh, uh, merged all of the company staff to help us on these projects we were working on. We also developed a business structure to launch P2O, and that came from the packet acquisition. Our Florida management team is absolutely incredible in this field. They've worked with private real estate deals, huge deals, they understand permitting, they've been through all the processes, they know their stuff, and they know what it takes to launch a product like this. The last thing is, uh, really, our testing in Q4, we finally said, you know what? We've done everything we can do, we know it works, we can scale it, but what, what do we, what, we've gotta get permitted, we've gotta deal with certain things, how do we do that? So we. We, we uh, engaged Isle Chem on December 9th, 2009. And that was by far the best decision this company has ever made. Because as I said, when we went in there, they were skeptical as could be. And four months later, I'm sitting across from Dale and he's looking at me and saying, I'm shocked. He said that six times about our energy conversion. And it's something when you can take a group full of PhD chemists that have seen everything on the planet and say they're shocked and a few other interesting words to describe, wow. <laughs> and that really was the, the best day for us at that point. And so JBI, and as well, all of this, we also had this huge balloon debt coming. So while we're engaging Isle Cam, building all this stuff, building Packet, uh, helping Javico, assisting everything, pulling together the financials, scaling the company all in parallel, we then have this huge loan that's due at the end of the year and I don't like debt, so we had to deal with it, and we did. In a very turbulent economic time, we were able to pay the debt out in full for all the subsidiaries. We did so, and we have a lot of cash to do our business with. That was just gorgeous. Thanks. So Q1, where we are now. First thing, locking up plastic feedstock everywhere. There's, it's everywhere. It's 94% of the plastic in the United States goes to landfill. Don't blame me, I didn't do it. They've done it for a long time. And despite what you hear, it's all going there. Visit a dump if you want to see it for yourself. It really is. The only thing that they're able to recycle right now is really PET plastic. It's separated by the large waste management companies. They sell it at basically 33 cents a pound or it goes to the Chinese. The rest of it, especially when you get into mixed plastics and complex plastics, they can't be recycled at all. If you have a plastic with some polypropylene, polyethylene in it, what have you, no one will accept it. I've talked to dozens of recyclers and they all tell me they have the same problem. If you've got a mixed plastic or any kind of contamination with it, it goes to landfill. So we've worked on locking up the plastic feedstock. The second thing was is this 20 ton processor. Time to scale and grow. Isle Kim said this is great, let's do it. So we had to do that this first quarter. Isle Kim also provided the va validation reports and that took some time. I actually had those weeks ago. I had a half an inch stack saying in every technical term imaginable, it works. And then it was getting that down into one simple report document that we could release to the market to show what it does. And so Dale summarized the results of 44 cons consecutive runs of the process, and he said to us, it's repeatable, it's scalable, it's clean, it's green. They can't say no residue, but they can't find any or there's no trace of it. Uh, sorry, as, isn't bad, like our residue can go to landfill. Uh, the emissions from the machine as well is clean, and I'll show you a few pictures when you see the final machine. That's really an incredible part, and I'll get to that in a bit. But really, the Isle Chem part was really our molecular audit phase. So they figured out how to really get this thing scaled properly and remove all the variables. 
uh, the financial markets, things we've learned, we've learned a lot in this last year. It's been a heck of a year, one year to do all this. The financial markets, every time I talk to somebody in the financial markets, they go, the tape business, ugh, oh, doesn't matter. Tapes is the declining field. No one uses them anymore anyway. They've obviously never visited NASA or any oil and gas company. That's all they write. And there's millions of tapes being written every year. But they believe, looking at the market of tape drive sales, and it continues to, to, to decline year and year and year, they just don't value the tape business. The second thing we've learned is that local manufacturers do create jobs for plastic toil, and they don't include its best gifts in their products. <laughs> it hap it's, it's faster, better, cleaner. It's great people we can work with close by, build this stuff. And the inv investment community really doesn't know about us. I learned that back in April when I bought the shell last year. I issued our 8K, went on and said, here we go, we're here. And there was no one there to buy the stock. It was like, oh. There's no volume. I've never done this before. So it was an interesting experiment, I'll tell you, <laughs> to start a company like that, to realize people have to learn about you. The funds have this. They have a huge retail investor base they can bring into a company and learn. So we, we basically, and everyone here, learned about this company through word of mouth. And that's basically how we've grown to this point in one year, by what we've done. Uh, finding solutions, we've got uh, the investment community does pay attention to numbers. That's why our 20-ton processor is done. Many of you, hundreds, are going to see it tomorrow uh, at our New York P2O factory. And what's important is we'll start posting run tickets for it when we have our, when we have our production permits in. And I'll get into a bit of explanations of what that's all about and how we do it. And so really, the investment community, as the big investment bankers, they want to see the numbers on the machine. What can it do? So for that, we have, and we engaged URS two weeks ago. I signed a contract. It's a small agreement. They're going to come out. And they're helping us with permitting outside of uh, New York, basically Florida and, and Canada. And they're also going to do a production audit of the machine. As well, the investment community then gets to take all that information. They get to do what they do best, which is multiply the results and figure out what we can do. So it all, our business right now is going to come down to how fast can we get permitted in various areas? How, can we, how quickly can we build these machines? How much simpler can they get? And how profitable are they? And that's something that the investment community is working very quickly to bring them up those numbers. Our immediate goals are this. So the DEC in New York has said, and they've looked at the chemistry of this. IELCHEM had to go there and say, you know, we've got this. The DEC is looking at it. They're going, wow, is that simple? What are we missing? Nothing. It works. So the DEC has allowed us to build and operate. You usually can't build anything like this without a permit. So they've allowed us to build it and operate it and test it for a stack test that'll happen fairly shortly. CRA from Canada has been engaged to test it for one day. So the DEC will come out that day with our stack test. We'll release the results. That's the first stage of a permit. After that, IELCHEM's already done the material balance work. They've already done the chemistry work and everything else we need to get our permits. So we put that all in the DEC and get a production permit. At that point in time, we can push the green switch on the machine and run it 24-7. That's another thing that IELCHEM figured out. We originally were going to run batch mode. They said, absolutely not. You run continuous 24-7. It makes a lot of sense to us now, and it works that way. Um, we have, again, retained URS to help us with worldwide permitting. That's going to become fairly important because they have all of the contacts in the local communities and counties to get with the right engineering people locally that are used to getting permits through in, in as quickly as they can with the help that we've had from the DEC and others to really get this, this machine permitted in as many states as we can. As well, we're working with all levels of government to try and solve the plastic problem. It is a huge expense for every municipality. They don't make money on it. It is a pain in the neck for them. And if there's any way that they can convert their plastic to diesel fuel at a fixed cost, it's a great use of, it's a really great green project to run in the community, and they can eliminate some of the volatility in their fuel markets.